Hi, good evening everybody. Um, I'm making today's video because uh, I'm going over that anamorphic lens for the iPhone and Android that I made a video, a half-assed video about and I just wasn't really happy because I never really came to any conclusion. I ended up just uh, getting excited and playing around with it. I do have some new footage to show you but first, um, maybe I'll just, you know, recap some of the basics. So, there's two ways to go about this. If you want to use anamorphic lenses or filters on your iPhone, this is an iPhone 14 Pro. You know, I still have mixed feelings about the anamorphic lens, especially because I think I broke it. <laughs> so, okay, that was uh, accident number one. Okay. I did not kill myself yet. Here, the anamorphic lens has split up into one, two, three, four, five parts. So I assume this holds that in place over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so far so good. There's some residue that is definitely not me. It looks like it was, you know, just ferment, poor manufacturing quality. And this, I think, is because I dropped it. I think, so this is probably what holds it in place. And honestly, my confidence level, there's no rubber gasket. My confidence level in this thing is actually very low at this point. Yeah, magnetic is nice, but if it's gonna fall off, that's a different story. Problem number one. I do not trust the strength of these magnets. Because so I tried filming yesterday using Freewell, mm -hmm. no, small rigs, uh, 1.55 anamorphic lens, and I was noticing a lot of anomalies, especially, you know, when it comes to image stabilization, you gotta turn that stuff off because uh, the image stabilization will cause all these wobbly effects. It's like a, it's like, I can only describe it as rolling shutter problems on steroids. I think it has something to do with how anamorphic lenses have to be perfectly horizontal. Because once, you know, you're off the horizontal, things start distorting in different ways, vertically and horizontally, which causes a big problem, which in-camera stabilization is not meant to deal with. I am not going to wipe out and destroy my... Oh, one more thing I realized. So this magnetic system here, you know, it's a magnet attached here. I've got a CPL polarizer just for the heck of it. And I am on VN variable VND what's that two four eight ND eight and yeah it sticks on pretty well but you know you all, all it takes is a little bump okay that was uh Places I am currently in Jakarta, Indonesia. Thought I might as well pull out the anamorphic lens, see if I can get anything interesting. Here 
in Tokyo. I'm on my way back from a trip to Jakarta and I just happened to have a 10 hour layover in Tokyo. So I thought I might as well pull out this lens uh, just for the heck of it to get some footage of the airport. Maybe I might step outside. I was also gonna try something something different see if there's a better way to make use of this anamorphic lens I, I don't understand how foreigners are able to navigate public transportation because I speak and read Japanese and even for me this can kind of be overwhelming at times so this is the old school way of riding. I don't think very many people do this anymore. You know, you've got to look at this map here. Figure out where you're going and this is how much. And then you buy that ticket. And you gotta remember to hold on to this ticket until your destination. Or else you gotta pay the maximum fee or something like that. So the thing with using the regular uh, camera is I guess the minimum focal length has been greatly reduced, or maybe not. It's just hard to predict how the camera is going to act. But one good thing is if I put it in cinematic mode, it no longer switches between lenses. I can see what I'm doing, but I have no idea how this is going to look after the, uh, what is this color thing going on? Is it just me, or do we see some kind of like a weird glowing of the floor? But anyway, wow, we're in Japan. is flickering oh I guess it has something to do with the refresh rate of these halogen lights or whatever they are Japan means vending machines. What the hell is this? Fresh or what? <laughs> wow, those are real oranges in there. Oh, and up here. Wow. So it makes you freshly squeezed orange juice. That's pretty amazing. Oh, and here is our train for monorail. Oh my god, 
I think this kind of shows that Japan is not doing very well economically. Back in the 90s when I used to live here, like these places were like bustling with all these businesses, but I don't know if this is the effect of COVID, but everything is closed. I just keep getting distracted. Look at this, this is so old school. This reminds me of when I was in high school, uh, circa 1991 to 1993, 4, 5, and there's nobody here. Wow. You know, back in the day, you'd play Street Fighter, and there's like one person sits on this side, and your opponent would sit on the other side. So you're playing, and then like an opponent comes, and then it would kind of freak you out sometimes, because sometimes you kind of peek around the corridor to see what kind of person it is. And if it's somebody that looks like you don't want to mess with, um, you probably don't want to win. <laughs> Again, another distraction here. Raspberries all 30 minutes, 8,000 yen, 45 minutes, 12,000 yen. So that's, you know, roughly $50 for 30 minutes, maybe $60 for 45 minutes. And prostitution is illegal in Japan, but Japan's a weird country of a lot of gray zones, and this is a place where you get that. And, you know, they have this, I guess they put this sign outdoors that lights up. They've got this sign here, but it looks like they went out of business. And finally, Right across from the brothel, I have finally found the barbershop I was looking for. I might have come to a premature conclusion, but I'm kind of thinking for the iPhone, um, I'm, I think I'm done with uh, using the anamorphic lens because I'm shooting 4K 60, and I can do this, I could do this, and everything is, um, nothing's, you know, curving around in weird ways. Focus works, everything works. And if you're gonna be using an anamorphic lens, I don't think you wanna be using it on an iPhone. This is my subjective opinion, but I think if you're using anamorphic, you're probably on a big rig, like, I don't know, Panavision, Red, whatever, Ari Alexa, any kind of camera movement is probably gonna be on a dolly or a high-tech motorized robotic arm or something, and I don't think it's the best idea to be walking around handheld with an anamorphic lens for all of the reasons, all of the problems and weirdness that I've bumped into. Then again, yes, you can rig out your iPhone and put it on a gimbal or whatever, stick it on a dolly, but then the biggest question is why? Would you want to do that? I think it's like, uh... The, the, the whole concept is for a very different purpose. And the iPhone was not... In my opinion, the iPhone is not something that I consider a tool to use to make your next cinematic masterpiece. Isn't the main purpose of having a nice camera on your iPhone just the fact that you can whip it out of your pocket when you want to and 
get nice footage without having to care about it. 